One thing that we do have to accept is the way I love to train and the way majority of my clients train, not all, but majority, is not everyone's got out for it. It's, it's a game that on the people that are a certain way inclined can really follow. And that's okay. This isn't me patronizing anyone or putting anyone down, but the fact of the matter is not everyone can stick to what we do like a dog with a bone day in day out, stay on this path and stay on the course regardless of what day it is, regardless of how shit you feel, regardless of what the circumstances are. Looks like we are all grounded again for the foreseeable future. So looks like a quiet gym to myself. I'm not gonna lie, obviously it's the third lockdown now, so it was kind of okay at first. Obviously I have a gym to myself and peace and quiet, but it's definitely uh, getting a little bit weird. Definitely miss the people, miss the environment, as it definitely does have a, a positive impact, especially when you're around so many people that obviously love the game and so many people that are on the same kind of wavelength as you are. So I definitely think I miss that aspect and I'm definitely looking forward to getting everyone back in this place when we are able to do so. Um, how long? Everyone keeps asking me and I'll know as much as you do. So I'll ask you back, how long do you think it's gonna take? Uh, one thing uh, that I do know, for now, we just have to crack on and do what we'll do. So today, I will take you through my push session and I will do a bit of a voiceover like I did last time, take you through each movement, give the reasoning as to why we are doing uh, what. So keep your eyes peeled. five tips how to get a massive chest so your warm-up sets I was going to dictate what your top set's going to look like so when you do what your warm-up sets treat them like your top set same precision the same movement pattern as you actually train your brain to go through that movement so if your warm-up sets are shitty your top set is going to end up being shitty so you need to make sure that from the get-go it's perfect as you're kind of programming your brain, programming your nervous system, what's about to happen. Big off season is coming. It's mega spot. She's actually filming for YouTube today as well. So I've got the whole camera crew in. Carlos and Gaz, teaming it up. Welcome guys, so another level up episode and another voiceover. So today we have five tips to build bigger chests in which I will cover arm path, um, the grip position um, and exercise selection, full range of motion, which I believe active range of motion is definitely bigger than what many people realize. Um, and correct exercise selection. So these are five tips. And, and now I will take you through step by step uh, to fill you in on the tips whilst you watch the session in hand. So set number one of the Atlantis Incline Press. Pay attention to grip. The grip is slightly in as again, we are targeting the upper pec. I definitely believe that the, the closer the grip, the more you will bias the upper pec through the arm path and uh, the position you will be in once you do actually fully contract at the top. So pay attention to my elbow and exactly where it finishes. As I'm pressing here, I am more mindful of rather than pressing up and down, I am thinking about driving my elbow across and driving my bicep across and in uh, to fully, fully contract the pec. As again, the motion and the function of your pec is not to bring your arm up and down, it's to bring your arm across your chest. So as you can see guys here, we always go through full depth. Um, for some people, they may argue that 
the depth that I'm going to is too much for me I definitely think the more range of motion you do have the more opportunity you have to grow and I can safely take my sets to this kind of range of motion with no discomfort or no risk and I definitely believe that I am getting so much more out of working within a much better range of motion. So next move on to uh, the shoulder press and the reason why I am taking the neutral grip is simple, uh, it aligns the elbow path more in line with the clavicle and the front delt which ties in perfectly well with this session uh, following on from the incline uh, Atlantis which definitely covers more of the upper pec however it definitely ticks off um, overall chest musculature however this specific movement is king for front delt and the clavicle which is the right upper part of your pec which in my opinion is very very hard to target with any other movement so here as you will see my elbow path almost diverges in uh, and as you can see you could align the elbow path in line with my actual front delt and the clavicle for me this is one of the most effective movements for the front delt and uh, that portion of the chest um, I don't believe that a shoulder press with a pronated grip is anywhere near as effective and potentially will cause um, shoulder issues if it is an upright press. Nine breath. <gasps> so, one thing that we do have to accept is the way I love to train and the way the majority of my clients train, not all, but majority, is not everyone's quite out for it. It's, it's a game that only people that are a certain way inclined can really follow. And that's okay. This isn't me patronising anyone or putting anyone down, but the fact of the matter is not everyone can stick to what we do like a dog with a bone day in day out, stay on this path and stay on the course regardless of what day it is, regardless of how shit you feel, regardless of what the circumstances are, you need to stay on the path and that is where the magic happens, that is where you see huge leaps in progress and this is what drives me, this is what I love, I'm not interested in anything else and I haven't been in a long long time, so when that desire takes over you're willing to do whatever it takes. Progress, above all, to be honest. And I think that's the mentality you need to have. If you're not blessed with the best of genetics in the world, but you have the work ethic to really get there and do regardless of what you need to do with your work ethic, regardless of what you need to do in your day, you can chase it like a dog with a bone. That's what we do, day in day out. This is why, next time I step on stage, gonna be like holy shit he's been working write that down my <laughs> next we're going to narrow smith press again this is a, a tricep compound now uh, however in this instance every single movement does tie in pretty well with the chest uh, delt and tricep so this one in particular I will take a grip uh, that is uh, shoulder width apart and again I allow my elbow path uh, to diverge in by my side and as I'm pressing I'm thinking more about driving the bar out away from the body rather than up uh, as again we are trying to target the tricep here one thing that you do need to pay attention to is the tempo I'm trying to stay in full control of the eccentric portion of the rep and the concentric so I'm not just moving the load from A to B I am a lot more mindful of how I'm moving the load uh, especially the eccentric part of the rep I'm not just letting the weight drop and for me that is a massive game changer when you are training for hypertrophy yeah. so next move on to the prime um, narrow rip flat press and again here we overload in the length and range so pretty much every movement that we have done will have um, overloaded the muscle 
of the chest and shoulder and the tricep in the shortened range and this movement in particular and this machine in particular allows us to overload in stretch position uh, which is ideal and perfect um, within this exercise sequence so what we are doing here is a, a triple drop set starting with four and a half plates and as you can see here we are actually pausing uh, in the stretch position um, really trying to get the most out of this movement and uh, where we actually put in our the where we actually put in the load and where we are actually targeting uh, the muscle fibers. Come on, then, This is the one exercise that can get so right or so wrong. See people doing this, the crab, and this is not going to get you much. The way you've got to look at it is the function of your pec is to get your arm across. So by that, obviously don't try and hold your shoulders back because if you try and hold your shoulders back, what's going to happen? That's all I can get. So you're going to have to allow your shoulders to come forward a little bit. Just don't protract it. So this is the motion. Now look at my shoulder. It has to come around a little bit, yeah? So. The motion actual pec is not pressing up and down, it's to actually get that arm across. So when you're using a pec deck or any kind of fly, you've got to keep a slight bend to a degree as you're going to stretch. Then as you're coming in, think about driving your bicep into your pec. So look what happens here. Boom. Yeah? Not, if I do this, I'm not getting no pec. I'm just looking like I'm constipated. It's not what you want to do. So here we have the prime pec deck and as I did explain, the arm path and the position plays a huge role here with how effective this movement will be. Um, again, first set, we overload uh, the pec in the shortened position. So having the blessing of the prime gym equipment, uh, we can manipulate the, the, the resistance profiles so that we can obviously really, really target the muscle um, to its full capacity in all the ranges. So first, we actually challenge in the shortened range. Um, second, it is more of a motion that, that, that challenges it uh, across the board. And then a third set, we will challenge the muscle in the stretch, which is the lengthened range. Um, and again, we are utilizing tempo techniques, which in the first set was a three second hold. Uh, then the second set, uh, we do a one second hold and the third set we actually do uh, a three second in the stretch.
two. So, this is actually meant to be assisted dip because I'm doing a two second pause on the stretch. But I'm actually going to do it with uh, the body weight, which at the moment I'm like 119 and a half kilo this morning, plus 30 for reps. Plenty of reps. So we actually spend two seconds uh, in the stretch. The reason why I'm actually saying it's assisted dip because we actually started off with this movement as assisted uh, with the dips and eventually we started to progress into adding load. So now we have added actual load with the stretches, uh, which is perfect. Uh, again, in this exercise sequence, our chest is totally done. So what we are trying to do here is maintain an upright position with our torso and go into a full stretch, staying upright and not leaning over, which will target the tricep and totally yes. finish them off in this position. Drive it up. Oh. If I win, she's gonna have to wash the dishes for the rest of times. When do I ever not wash the dishes? Eleven. You got more than that last time. I know. So then why why are you why is it even a I'm just lining it up? I right. always wash the dishes. I've been spoiled. First by my mum, now by Smeg. It's my nan's fault that. Blame my nana. So next we have single arm cable overhead extension. Um, this is a, a Dante's Real special uh, where we do spend five seconds uh, in the stretch each rep. And believe me now guys, if you can try this, this adds a ton of metabolic work to your session. And if you do struggle with your arms, um, adding pause in the stretch are very, very effective. Uh, so this move in particular, I definitely, definitely um, advise you all try, especially if you are struggling with the arms uh, in particular. <laughs> nice. 
So next we have prime laterals. Uh, here we have four sets. The first two sets we actually hold uh, in peak of the contraction. The first set, again, we overload the shortened range where our delts are still fresh as this particular session. Um, it's more of a, a, a pec um, dominant session. Uh, not one of my shoulder dominant sessions so we actually leave the lateral work for the very end uh, which is here so first two sets we actually hold two seconds in peak of contraction the first set is in the short end range uh, the second set is in mid range uh, obviously utilizing the the, the resistant profile uh, options on the prime gym equipment the third set is still at mid setting but we don't have a squeeze um, we just go all the way with perfect uh, or as perfect as we can tempo um, again minimizing momentum trying to pause for a micro pause in hole and at the top and the third set and final set finally we overload in the lengthen range which at that point your delt will still be strong but it will have absolutely nothing left in the shortened range so here uh, it is ideal sequence to really really finish the delts off and call it a day on this one guys so guys that's pretty much a wrap up now we're going to do a little bit of stretching and core work and in a moment I'm actually going to video a bit of content with my clients which I'll share with you guys as well uh, basically the way I structure my clients training when they have their back training they always have an explanation and they know which bias they're trying to target within the movement. So whether it's a lat bias or upper back bias. So they know which musculature of the back they're trying to target through the position, the alignment and the way they perform the movements. So we will dig into that a little bit. I'm going to use Meg Smeg as my assistant. Isn't it Smeg? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So we'll get you that into guys, we'll show you that. So this is what we do now, we do after every session, pretty much do a set of hanging lat stretch, and then I do 60 second plank, followed by dip stretch, dip stretch, bicep stretch, and then around the posing. So that's inclusive of every session. Keep that as a good habit from prep. And we kind of transfer that on, haven't we, darling? All inclusive. All inclusive. Yes, prof. No discounts. No discounts. Not today. Smackdown. Unless you want to look at the description. Plenty of discount calls there. Please don't use a straight bra for targeting the lap. We actually want a neutral grip, uh, something with fixed position that will keep it neutral. If you don't have this, uh, either a mag grip or any other um, attachment that will allow you to keep your wrist neutral, will do. So. Let's go for the lap bias first. Yep. So, to target the lap, we don't want to see any retraction here, but the motion is always forward and in. So we want to be thinking about bringing the elbow into the pocket of your hip. So this stays perfectly straight. You want to maintain a perfect torso, and obviously with a pelvis, you don't want to tilt it back. If anything, you want a slight bit of anterior tilt forwards there, like make our so we can drop a perfect straight line across the torso here. So let's go initiate the movement now. There we go. So see what happens with the elbows here. Now, there's no retraction here. If anything, the elbow is traveling parallel to the torso here. Back up. And as we stretch, don't allow the shoulders to protract. The shoulders stay put. So protract. I don't want this because then see this this is not on anymore back in a little bit while I get pulled down so here we want to take the opposite position to what we did would to target the lat so here we want actual a lot of thoracic extension and if anything the hips are slightly tilted back so as you can see the way Meg positions out here she's got maximum thoracic extension and this way she will align her elbow path in with the upper back so look what happens here now pull Perfect. With the upper back as well, with the pull down, we actually want to see maximum retraction. However, that retraction will happen naturally as you pull your elbows back. So go back up again. There we go. And drive it through, drive it through, drive it through. And now we retract. Boom. If you try and retract before your elbows are in line with your torso, you will limit your actual range of motion. So back up. 
We don't want to retract first here, ever, because that will limit the range of motion. Retract, pull down, see this. Now, back up. Right, now let's see the pull down, and then she will start to retract once her elbow starts to meet her body parallel. Boom, see this now. Full range of motion, full contraction, and full retraction there, working her upper back musculature. So the elbow path, which will be in line with the upper back. So now, let's go, 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 there we go. And as you can see guys, retraction happens as her elbows are parallel with her body. Boom, and now we're retract. There we go. So always remember guys, nice bit of thoracic extension, keeping chest up nice and proud, and then we'll pull through, keeping a nice neutral spine here. This does not go here or here. We want to keep it neutral, as we do with any RDL or any pulling movement, this always stays put. Now go again. Boom. Also, as you go into lengthen range, guys, you want to stretch, but you don't want to let go of this. See how she let go now? So back on, back in, back in, back in. Drive it through, pull. There we go, and back in. So you want to lengthen, what that means is stretch rather than letting off the tension. See here, she's going into a full stretch, but she's not actually letting the tension off her muscle. And this is super important, whether you're doing lat or upper back work, you do not let the tension off the intended muscle. All right guys, so that is a wrap up. Hope you enjoyed it. These are my five tips to getting a bigger chest. So you did get a bit of an explanation of how we're over things, why I do it, and you get to see it for yourself while I take you through it as well. So I hope you enjoyed it guys. Anything else you want me to cover, please do let me know. Uh, you did actually get to see a clip of the content I do uh, for my clients as well. I, de I definitely believe that with the online base that I have, it goes a lot further than many people think with online coaching, especially with the things that you need to teach guys, especially when you don't have a close contact to them. Uh, sometimes you have to film certain content to explain things how you want them done in a specific way which I actually want it done so for me that's super important and it's the only way they can learn through obviously me covering uh, certain aspects of the game the way I did today um, again guys really appreciate everyone watching and stay tuned love a look